Bears are icons of American culture. We have sports teams named after Bears, the Chicago Bears. The Chicago Cubs. I wonder if the Chicago Cub is the Cub of the Chicago Bear. We have the Memphis Grizzlies. By Primo. Attack. Oh! And the Boston Bruins. There are more than 40 colleges whose mascots are bears. Bears are heavily prevalent in indigenous history and culture and storytelling. There is a bear on the state flag of California, even though California doesn't have bears anymore. There are cartoons about bears. We have named places and people after bears. Companies use bears to sell you toilet paper. My hand is clean. Oh yeah, I'm Charmin clean. They cause traffic jams or bear jams because people just want to see a bear. Bears are everywhere. They're even in our minds. I mean, if you've ever gone out hiking in bear country, despite the fact that it's very rare you would ever run into a bear and fears of bear attacks are overblown, but you should still take the proper precautions because bears are dangerous and wild animals. If you've ever gone out hiking in bear country, you know what I'm talking about. Bears are always on your mind when you're out in bear country. I mean, we have this certain perception of them, right? We admire them, but we have a healthy respect for them. We know what they're capable of. We know that they're wild animals. Well, I say that, but inevitably I will wake up to a headline tomorrow of someone who got too close to a bison in Yellowstone and it trampled the crap out of them. But my point is that bears are ever present in our culture and in our lives. They're an iconic American animal and their significance to our culture, our ecosystems, our economy, all of it cannot be overstated. But I'm here to tell you that for a period of about a hundred years, all was not well with the grizzly bears of Yellowstone National Park. So not well, in fact, that the grizzly bears of Yellowstone National Park, and indeed the entire lower 48, almost went extinct. And you'll never guess whose fault it was. Yeah, it was us. It was us. It's always us, isn't it? This is why we can't have nice things on this planet. We always just f it up. But then we didn't f it all up and we actually saved grizzly bears and they have a healthy population now, but are also maybe still threatened and people are arguing about it because that's what we do. We argue about things, but that comes later. For now, let's talk about how we almost f it all up. Hmm. Oh, also, like and subscribe for more stories about parks and check out my Patreon if you want to support what I'm doing here. Back to the thing. Okay, Yellowstone, 1872, America's first national park, the world's first national park. We notice. Right off the bat, after Yellowstone was established, it became a tourist attraction. People came to see the scenery and the geysers and the thermal features, which people still can't seem to not dismember themselves in. I mean, how hard is it, really? And yes, they came to see the bears. Except, unlike today, where we have bear-proof trash cans and containers and you watch the bear safety film and the rangers talk to you about bear precautions at the campground, back then, they fed the bears. They, they fed the bears. Big ol' heaping piles of garbage. Yep, basically as soon as we started generating garbage in Yellowstone, bears started eating garbage in Yellowstone. At first, it was kind of just taking place behind some of the park hotels, but then park staff figured out that this attracted the bears, and instead of, I don't know, not dumping garbage on the ground, they set out the garbage as feeding areas, like literal lunch counters for bears. No, they actually put out signs that said lunch counter for bears. And then, you know what else they did? They set up bleachers for people so they could watch the bears eat the garbage. And it would become a show and a spectacle. And this went on for like a hundred years. 
from the early 1880s until the 1940s, but even after the 40s, which was when they closed the dumps for public viewing, they still had open dumps in Yellowstone. By the 1960s, for example, over 100 bears per night were attracted to the Trout Creek dump. And this circus act contributed to a culture of bear feeding at Yellowstone because it wasn't just park staff doing this at select garbage dump areas. Visitors to the park started feeding bears as well on the roadside, from their cars, in the campgrounds. They would literally just feed bears right out of their hands. This was actually outlawed back in 1902, but park officials didn't do anything. It was a tourism boost. Feeding bears brought people to the park, so they turned a blind eye. As you can imagine though, the effects of this were numerous. For one thing, conflicts with bears were rampant during this time. Between 1931 and 1969, there were an average of 48 bear-related injuries and over 100 bear-related incidents of property damage in Yellowstone each year. It also changed people's perceptions of bears. They viewed them as these cute, cuddly, docile little snugglers, not thousand pound killing machines capable of ripping them limb from limb. That is understandably an issue when, as we said, 48 people were injured by bears each year. But it also meant that bears were viewed as like circus acts. They were performance art, not wild animals. And when you don't treat wild animals like wild animals, they become what you call habituated. Being habituated meant that the bears became used to humans and human food, and that they associated humans with food. It was an easy meal, right? Because they knew if they came up to humans, they would be fed. They were conditioned to do this. And this is where the problem started. Well, looking back on it, I think it's clear the problem started way before this, but this is where the problem started for like the bear population. Because beginning in the 1950s and 1960s, we started to change the way we thought about wild animals and conservation into national parks. We decided we didn't want our wild animals to be circus acts anymore. We didn't want the grizzlies of Yellowstone to eat garbage out of the palm of our hand. We wanted the grizzlies of Yellowstone to be grizzlies, wild animals in the wild doing wild things. So the park service cut those grizzlies off cold turkey. No more garbage dumps, no more feeding bears out of your car. They actually started enforcing that rule. Garbage cans became bear proof. You know, the ones you have to stick your hand up like that because only sophisticated creatures like us can figure out how to open them. They implemented new backcountry rules. So you had to put your food in a bear container and hang it from a tree. There were educational campaigns teaching people about the new rules, explaining how bears are wild animals and feeding them is bad and how we should only interact with them from a distance. You know. All the stuff they tell you about today, that started back in the 1970s. But again, the park service just flipped the switch, cold turkey, and the bears didn't know anything about this. It's not like the bears signed a waiver or accepted the terms and conditions or anything. No, they continued to come up to people for food. They continued to wander into the campgrounds and developed areas through no fault of their own too, right? Like, they were simply behaving the way we taught them to, but now they weren't getting fed. So they became hangry and then they were a threat to people's lives. So they had to be killed or removed. Between 1967 and 1972, just five years, 229 grizzlies were killed or removed from Yellowstone National Park. By the mid 1970s, less than 250 individual grizzly bears remained in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem. But this is the part where we don't f it up. In 1975, grizzly bears are listed as threatened in the lower 48 under the Endangered Species Act. What this meant basically was that not only was the goal to stop grizzlies from going extinct, but it was actually to recover their population to a sufficient size so that they wouldn't need to be protected at all. That meant more research was conducted on grizzlies so we could figure out the best way to save them, more money was allocated to their management, moratoriums were placed on hunting them, and so on. This worked. 
listing grizzlies under the Endangered Species Act worked. In the 1980s and 90s, grizzlies expanded their range outside of Yellowstone National Park by 50%. In 2019, there were 728 grizzlies in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem, a nearly 200% increase from just a half century earlier. This tells me a few things. That the Endangered Species Act is an incredibly powerful and important piece of legislation for one, and that we should do everything we can to protect it. But it also tells me that bears will remain an important part of American culture. Because not only do we put them on flags and name sports teams after them and make cartoons about them, but we fought to bring them back from the edge of extinction. We cared about them that much. That's why we can still go to Yellowstone to see the bears, not learn about them in some exhibit. We just do it from a safe distance now and not feed them literal garbage. All right, that's everything I've got for you. Tell me what you think about feeding bears garbage. I don't know. Not exactly something I expect any of you to condone, although this is the internet. So anyway, like and subscribe for more park stories. Follow me on Instagram at National Park Diaries. And if you're feeling extra supportive this holiday season and want to give your park loving friend, family member, pet, a good park gift, then you might want to check out my Patreon. There's some good stuff over there, including this month's book club discussion on WALL-E, the best Pixar, the best Pixar movie. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.